And here with more in our Ask the Doc segment is Dr. Masante Levine. And of course, answering more of our medical questions. We've got lots of those, so we're going to jump okay, right on no in here. Problem. What temperature is dangerous enough for the temperature to, to go to the ER? I've had fever of 101 degrees. Not sure if that's high enough to go to the ER. I think especially if it's sustained, that is high enough. Certainly, you can have temperature spikes throughout the day. If it goes back to normal, I'm not too concerned. Most illnesses will have a sustained fever or sustained temperature on that range, even up to 102, 103. That typically indicates a significant infection, whether it be bladder or pneumonia or skin rash. Typically, it's going to be bacterial, and it kind of alerts itself to maybe the location. So patients normally will have symptoms with the fever. Typically, an easy diagnosis, but sometimes can be very challenging. Why does why does the temperature always seem to spike at about, oh, 458? I don't when know. When doctor's office is closed. We wanted that as well. Yeah. There's a conspiracy <laughs> somewhere. I think so. Uh, this person says, I'm pretty sure I have kidney stones. When do you know that it's time to go to the hospital? I'm going to the bathroom more than normal, and I'm doubled over in pain as well as being nauseated. Symptoms basically dictate that, and certainly if you're in a lot of pain, Pain, that is one symptom. High fever is another. Urinating a lot of blood, just nausea, not feeling well. Uh, normally just a lot of symptoms typically dictate if you need to go. You don't necessarily have to remove the kidney stones. There are a lot of people out there who have kidney stones. We leave them alone. Certainly the bigger the size, the more damage they can do in terms of obstruction mm -hmm. and contributing to infection. So we primarily base a lot on the symptoms as well as the blood work if they get to the emergency department or their physician's offices if they have kidney failure very high Y count those are typically other symptoms or uh, things that we look at to determine if they need to be hospitalized or if we can send them home how can you prevent kidney stones for the most patients it's really just staying very well hydrated and trying to eat a plant based diet. Unfortunately, here in America, we eat a lot of animal-based diet. We eat a lot of meat. We eat a lot of whole dairy, cheese. That tends to produce a lot of the kidney stones. We are not very well hydrated. Uh, we drink a lot of sugary beverages. So we kind of put ourselves at risk for the development of kidney stones. Uh, so staying well hydrated, healthy diet. Okay. Another person uh, has been getting lightheaded and dizzy and shaky. And after that, the back of their head hurts so bad that it scares them. What could be going on? You know, lightheadedness is a very nonspecific symptom of so many different things. Certainly, if the symptoms persist, I would recommend an immediate evaluation. It could be anything from thyroid disease, severe anemia, dehydration. Mm. It could be a stroke, it could be a brain tumor. I mean, so many different things. Normally we have to do blood, x-rays, a good physical exam. And despite that, sometimes we don't know even after that examination, but some common situations would be medications and some of the is issues that I mentioned. Okay, uh, if someone is taking lithium and Zyprexa and runs out of the medicine, can it harm them? You know, those are medicines we use for typically bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, so certainly they can have an exacerbation of their illness if they stay out of those medicines for a long period of time. As we know, that disease a lot of times will create a lot of noncompliance and a lot of patients will relapse just because they don't like the way they feel mm -hmm. and they run out. So certainly it can create some problems. Okay, what are the side effects of immunosuppressants? Immunosuppressants mainly mean that your immuno immune system is being suppressed. A lot of times that's from medications or other illnesses like diabetes or HIV or cancer. So normally you'll have infections primarily, a lot of colds, a lot of infections of the skin, maybe frequent pneumonias or bacterial infections. Typically the physician will become alerted to that if it seems to be a little bit more frequent and we start asking questions, maybe doing some other blood work, x-rays, to try and figure out why they are immunosuppressed. All right, we've got lots of other questions. We'll get to those in just a minute, yes, so don't go away. Dr. Levine will answer more of your questions next on Live at Five. We're back with Dr. Masante Levine to answer more of your medical questions. This is a 48-year-old female, has a son that is 14. He has headaches only on the right side of his head. He's also nauseous, and the doctor says it is a tension headache. 
Could there be another cause though? Yeah, absolutely. Headaches a lot of times are benign. Most of them are, uh, but we're always concerned about significant causes of headaches such mm -hmm. as malignancy or aneurysms or bleeding, things Especially like that. Especially with this one being consolidated just to the right side of his head. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of times we will do an x-ray just to kind of clear the air, maybe an MRI just to make sure, but most of the time they are benign. We do not need x-raying, but uh, just a concern that it could be something more malignant. We typically will do it first off anyway. Uh, certainly if there are symptoms to suggest maybe something else is going on, then we will do the CAT scan or the MRI first off, but typically we don't have those symptoms. Is there anything that will help a tension headache as far as over-the-counter medication? You know, low stress, but that's certainly hard to do. A lot of us are built differently emotionally and placed in certain positions. We may feel that stress or feel that tension and we can't manage it and will manifest as a headache. Over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medicines, Tylenol work very well. Diet is important. Good sleep is important. Those are always things to consider. Try to figure out what your triggers are. We talk about that mm -hmm. a lot on this show because a lot of times that can alleviate your symptoms, but there's a lot of good medication that can be prescribed to patients, so certainly work with your physician and try to figure out which one works best for you. Okay. An 84-year-old male diagnosed, diagnosed with acid reflux and has had both an ultrasound and colonoscopy. No medicine prescribed seems to work anything that you can recommend? You know, it's like anything else. Sometimes you may have to uh, try six medications before that sixth one will work. So we kind of play the medicine shuffle all the time when it comes to that. And there's a lot of different acid reflux medications, prescription and over the counter. You might have to try a combination. Sometimes you need surgery, especially if you have a hiatal hernia. Uh, there's mm. local surgeons here that perform that procedure. It could be something else. So certainly keep kind of grinding it out with your physician to make sure that there's nothing else you're overlooking. They might need to do an abdomen pelvis CT to make sure there's nothing intra-abdominal, intra but uh, certainly we typically can get control of acid reflux or uh, esophagitis if that is the cause. Okay. A 32-year-old female has a 12-year-old son that has random nosebleeds that come at all times of the day, but recently started when he sleeps. What could be the cause? A lot of times the nose can become very dry and the blood vessels can become very friable and easy to spontaneously bleed. A lot of times we will have them try kind of a nasal saline spray that they can get over the counter called ocean nasal spray. You'll squirt it in there a few times a day just to kind of keep it moist. A lot of times that will alleviate the bleeding. But if not, they can typically go to the ear, nose, and throat doctor. They can cauterize those blood vessels that seem to be bleeding all the time, and that can alleviate that. And plus, we want to make sure there's nothing else in the nostrils, polyps, tumors, etc., that can also bleed. So if it's persistent, certainly get a good evaluation. But we see this a lot, actually. Now, with the allergy season, could this be a cause? Well, if they're not sneezing or have any runny nose or watery eyes, Probably not, but possible. I mean, again, you can try the over-the-counter allergy medicine, Claritin, Zyrtec as a trial before you go in to see the doctor. It may be alleviated, absolutely. Okay, a 24-year-old female, when she was 19, she started getting lightheaded for no apparent reason. Several times she's passed out while she's standing at work. Any idea what could be the cause? And, you know, a lot of times we think of cardiac disease and a 24-year-old, kind of unlikely, but could be something congenital. Certainly neurological issues can occur occur. Anxiety, stress a lot of times can cause young females to become dizzy, but thyroid, anemia, whole host of things, almost similar to headache, need some x-rays, blood work to make sure nothing else is going on. So what type of doctor do you go to for that? Just a, a general practitioner? Yeah, certainly always start with your primary care physician or health care professional, let them do an evaluation. Then if they cannot solve the mystery or they need further testing, they can be referred to the x-ray department or a subspecialist that does this all day long. All right, Dr. Levine, as always, we appreciate you stopping yes, by. And you can always visit our website and see the answers to these and other medical questions posted online. And if you'd like to have Dr. Levine answer your medical questions, you can always mail us at the address listed on your screen, faxes 892-7305. Email us at laf at kftm.com. Post those questions every Monday on our KFTM News Facebook page.